This is a review of the maintenance script on tension-free hernioplasty from Liechtenstein. Hernia repair techniques have undergone increasingly rapid advances due to both new technology and the development of new repair techniques to take advantage of these tools. The landmark paper by Liechtenstein and colleagues, published in the American Journal of Surgery in 1989, was a pivotal point in the history of inguinal hernia repair in that it applied the established surgical principle of tension-free suture approximation to inguinal hernia repair. While the use of mesh in inguinal hernia repair had been previously described as an onlay buttress or placed into the preperitoneal space, the key innovation described in this manuscript was the technique of incorporating the mesh into the floor of the inguinal canal as a bridging structure to allow for tensionless closure of the defect. This circumvents the need for approximating tissues that do not naturally lie in apposition, as was the practice in other contemporary repairs. Similar to other approaches, the inguinal canal is explored and the spermatic cord structures are separated from excess lipomatous tissue, and the hernia sac, if present, is reduced. The hernia sac is then invaginated and occasionally requires a suture to keep in place, as indicated by the yellow arrow. The key difference in the standard repair on the left and the tension-free repair on the right is the use of a mesh implant to bridge the shelving edge of the inguinal ligament to the conjoined internal oblique and transversus abdominis tendons, removing the need for direct approximation of these naturally separated structures, a maneuver that inevitably produces tension. Reconstruction of the internal ring is achieved by a lateral to medial slit in the mesh implant in which the cord structures are invested. This is then closed laterally with a single additional suture between the tails of the mesh. The authors report a series of 1,000 consecutive patients. This was done at a single institution by multiple surgeons with one to five year follow-up. Predominantly, these were done under local anesthetic. Importantly, patients were told to return to normal physical activity soon after surgery. Some patients were reportedly returning to manual labor jobs within two to three days. The results of this study were impressive. The tension-free repairs described by Liechtenstein had no recurrences and no infections among the thousand patients in this series. Typical contemporary recurrence rates were approximately 10%. One notable exception to this were repairs performed at the Shouldeis Hospital, which has maintained a stable 3% recurrence rate for many years. This is a tissue repair that does not require mesh, however, is significantly operator dependent, and patient selection may pay, play a factor in the good result. The limitations of this study are centered around the single institution nature and the relatively short follow-up that was produced for this series. The authors did acknowledge this and indeed published a follow-up series several years later with 4,000 consecutive patients and one to 11 year follow-up with only three recurrences. All of these were attributed to a technical error. Subsequent studies have shown consistent benefit with low recurrence of mesh versus without, even as surgical techniques have improved and recur recurrence rates for primary hernia repair with mesh have maintained between 2 and 4 percent. This has even been preserved with treatment of recurrent hernias uh, in the Danish hernia database study. The impact of this study has been substantial. Tension-free mesh repair is the recommended method for inguinal hernia repair by multiple professional societies. It is an approachable and easy to understand technique and is often adapted with the addition of a preperitoneal mesh plug. The approachable nature and the good results obtained have facilitated wide adoption of this. The influence on subsequent surgical technique has been substantial.